guys welcome back to Big Sky Diamond Painting I'm Bronwyn and today I am doing a final review and uh, showing you how I de-kit and store my extra beads um, this is Cat Bat by Diamond Art Club I have already told you all the story of how excited I was to do this painting so I was really really excited to finally finish it I just finished it earlier today and um, I mean I think it's looked beautiful you should have seen the you know pan film thing that I did at the beginning and um, it has turned out gorgeous um, this was my first completed diamond art club that I did um, I had purchased ones before this but this was the first one that I got that I was like really burning to do and did not have other people's gifts to do beforehand so yeah um i loved doing this painting um of course the diamond art club canvas was flawless i had a really um good time an easy time doing it um even the one place where i put down some extra or some drills in the wrong color um you know it wasn't that bad to pull them off and put them back in the right spot and thankfully I noticed it before it was too many so I did not have to worry about too many sticky drills um yeah and um I did not ha or I did have plenty of leftovers as is usually the case with Diamond Art Club and I mean you guys can tell me what you think I think that this little cutie is just gorgeous um I know some of us out there don't like bats and I know not everyone likes sphinx cats either um, but I just think they're adorable and I also think bats are adorable but um, I have had a couple people comment that they thought it was a dragon cat so I figure if the reason you don't like this is because it's part bat you can just imagine that it's part dragon um, but really I mean just look at that sparkle it's got that beautiful like square does the wave you know um it's just it's just lovely and um the only real thing that i would say is that i am glad that i had heard that maybe this batch of square diamonds was not the best that diamond art club has had because while they were great they did not pop or do anything like that and they are very vibrant and shiny and i think that overall they look great i would have been a little bit disappointed after hearing so many good things about diamond art club squares if this had been my first diamond art club and i did not know ahead of time that this was not their usual amazing drill quality um pretty much all of the square the the drills did all of the colors i mean did have that problem with the little divot in the back that tends to mean that the um, drills are not going to be completely even and um it does not really affect the overall product in a way that bothers me um there are still a few spots here that I'm you know once I get a straightener I'm going to go back through and just kind of even up a little bit but you know from a distance on most of the colors it's really not noticeable the only places I really notice it are on these light colored bits in the bubbles where the the diamonds are just a little bit off kilter and that's more about placement than the actual gapping so that wasn't really necessarily diamond art club's fault but if they fit together more securely then you have less issues with that so um that's the only thing i will say but i mean i had no other issues with it um i'll show you my leftover drills um you can kind of see in there what we've got i had some left over in every color um 718 here did have 
quite a bit of trash um, for a Diamond Art Club, but it was not like bad drills. It was just like the flash from the the plastic, you know, like the little round droplets that were in there. So, you know, just they were big enough that they made it through the sieve or whatever they put it through. So not a big deal. I just picked those out. Um, I don't keep my trash separate for each painting. So I don't have like a, this is the total trash amount to show you or anything. Um, but yeah, I had leftovers in everything and it's, I mean, it's quite a few. I wasn't worried at all that I was going to run out of anything. And um, these empty ones that you see here are just where I had to use two chambers for one color because I had more than could fit in one in one slot. So, um, yep, that turned out really great. And I definitely rate this as a A-plus experience. Um, maybe an A just because um, the drills were not like super amazing like I thought they were going to be but you know um, they were really good especially since right now we're having such a problem with square drills and you know there are really only a few companies that we know for sure will not pop and in my book anytime you have a painting with drills that don't pop you are good so the fact that these didn't pop they look amazing and they you know still fit together pretty well you know still gets an a plus i think it's only a half point deduction you know as far as grading goes i guess um, anyway, so the next thing I am going to show you guys is how I de-kit, which is pretty similar to how everyone does, um, and then how I, well, and how I store my extra diamonds, which I, um, adapted from a person on you, uh, not YouTube, on Facebook, who did a Facebook video, and basically I have one of these plastic shoe boxes and I have one for round diamonds and one for square diamonds and inside each shoe box I have these four by six baggies and in each four by six baggie I put an index card and on the index card I write the color and then inside the index card, I put baggies with my extras. So each project gets its own baggie. So that way I don't have to worry, is it the same dye lot? Is it, you know, does it match? That kind of thing. I just put them all in there. Um, like these are just full bags of, set of the same thing. This is from a different project. And I just stick those in here. And some the person that I had seen on Facebook... Um, it did a similar thing to this, but she had both of these, like, on two sides of a big Sterilite bin separated by some leftover, like, foam rollers, which was cool. But I, like, love these, these shoe boxes for storing everything. So I thought, wow, that's pretty much perfect. Um, I mean, it's not quite wide enough, but they fit just fine because the top just kind of flops down. So... Um, she also had pre-made all her cards for each color. I did not do that. I just sort of add along as I go. I have a Google Doc that I will put a screenshot of in here. That I just added. Um, I found, and I just found randomly online, a... Google Doc that had all the DMC colors in it and I added my own columns that basically said round and square and I just put a little Y that changes the color of the cell to green if I have made a card for it. So I have that for the square diamonds and then I have one for the round. And then in the round I have like this little index card holder thing that I then subdivide and put a lot of like extra stuff in here. 
Um, this is my baggie of extra wax. I have pens that I've already, you know, filled up with wax, squishies, um, my little baggie of pink pens, that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Um, I also put, like, my special gems in here as well. I just put those in their own bags. And, you know, those are ABs, that kind of thing. And it's basically all the same, the same, this is a special stone bag, you can see. And I just, because these, since they don't have DMC colors, I just kind of flop them all in there. Um, for the special gems, I might start at least labeling the bags, these little bags, with the code that comes on the bags, just in case, like, these big size ones have similar codes. Because then maybe, like, if I get a ton of them later, um, I can start subdividing and maybe make a whole nother uh, box for them. And then also, if I have a project that doesn't have DMC codes, I just make them their own 4x6 bag, title of the thing, and just throw them in there. It's super simple. Um, so, of course, like right now, rounds is the only one that I have with that, even though I've made more square projects. And my round box was the first one I made, so that's why all the extra stuff is back there. So, since the squares are what we're doing today, and I'm just going to do like a quick demo. I'm not going to completely de-kit this because I like to do that by my computer with the spreadsheet pulled up so I can go through and see if I was going to do it here, I would just like look through this and say, oh, well, I have this number, and then I'd go through to the next one. So I like to, that's another reason I like to have these in order, because it makes the de-kitting process a lot easier. Um, this is my Ziploc bag of mini baggies. Um, I normally, honestly, just use the baggies that come with the kits, and then I have these extra if I run out, but these you can get at Walmart. They're like one or two dollars in the jewelry section. There's like a little display. Um, I thought that these were like the two by three ones, but it turns out that these are actually like little, they're like two by one and a half inches. And I'll show you, they come to as, as two and you like pull them apart. So they're actually like these little tiny square ones. And like I said, I am not in the least bit OCD, so I don't care if my baggies are all different. And since they're all from different projects, I just take them and throw them in there. So we'll do a couple colors since I have two baggies. And I know for a fact that my first two colors on here are in fact in here already, so I don't need to make new cards for them. Um, I might, well, I mean, really, all you would do if you were making a new thing is you would take the 4x6 baggie, take an index card, write your number on it, slip it in there, and then slip your baggie in with the color. So, we'll take out 154, that's our first color. Um, I like to use a little tray. Hi guys, so when I was um, editing my demo of this, I realized that I didn't record any of the part where I actually showed you how I de-kit my drills. So I am just re-recording this a couple days later to show you guys how I do that. And I figured since I hadn't done that, I will just show you how I start a new, a new baggie since um, now that I finished Cat Bat, which you saw earlier in this video, um, I've started a sort of combination between a full drill and a special drill, partial. It's one of those AZ QSD ones with like a full drill in the middle and then a frame that has specials. So I finished these three special drills and none of them had codes, DMC, no DMC codes on the regular drills and no fancy codes on the rounds. They were all just numbered. So I am going to do my kit like I do for those and that means it's getting its own baggie 
So I'm just going to do that. So what I do is I just put the name of the painting. So we're just calling it the AZQSD horse. Um, I will call it something different if I have to. So we just put title on there, easy peasy. And then we slip it in the bag and we set that aside. Now these are my baggies, my baggie of baggies that I get left over from kits. I have all different kinds in here. Um, right now it's mostly full of Evermoment baggies because that's what I've gotten a lot of lately. So we're just going to get three Evermoment baggies out to have them ready. Um, if you remember, my last pack of drills had my last um, Craftmates lockables container of drills had square labels. I do separate them out. So if it's a square drill painting, it will have square labels. And if it's a round drill painting, it'll have round labels. Um, I do keep them separated in the shoe boxes that you saw, but, um, you know, I like to do this little extra thing just in case. So I peel the sticker off here. Um, these round labels pull off a lot easier than my square ones. And then I take the baggie and open it. And I like to, if the baggie's like, you know, static shut, I just use the pen to open it. I stick the label inside. That way, if it falls off, it's still in there. And then after I've dumped the, the beads in the tray, I just throw them in there. And of course, since this is a special drill, it's going to give me trouble. And I don't have, normally I would just use a drill pen to knock that loose, but I don't have one up here with me handy. I mean, I've got a bunch in the in the shoe box, but, and then you, you know, get the air out and then just roll it up and that closes it. So then you have a little baggie with, that would be like your DMC code on it if it had a DMC code, but since this one didn't, it just says 33 because it was color 33. Um, I might fold up my key, like cut it out for my inventory sheet that I made and throw it in here just for giggles, but we'll see. So I'm just going to do these other ones, just two more. I was really kind of disappointed these didn't have DMC codes. Um, but I'm lazy, so I'm not going to bother with color matching them, because what's the point? These were pretty cute, these little pink teardrops. They have little flowers on the frame. Anyway, just again, drop them in there. Pull the air out. Seal the bag. drop it in here like so and you know again like if this did have a DMC color there would be the DMC color on there and last one if you don't have you know something you can just use your finger but and honestly with with these little baggies from ever moment um, I'm fine with using my finger it's just some of the floppier ones it helps to have something more rigid like a sharpie or you know something blunt and chunky to put in there to spread it out these were kind of cool they're kind of a little bit like a b coated the marquee shapes and we'll throw these in there and again, pull it tight, pull it up, seal it, drop it in here. 
and then I like to lay it down to get the air out and then seal it like that but you know it's not as big of a, a deal to have well wow okay it's not wanting to seal though sometimes these four by six baggies are a little bit temperamental there we go no why on earth Okay, there we go. So, let's pretend this is like a number. So if this was a number, I would just go through here in there, find a number and slip it in where it goes if I was making a brand new one. And then I would check it off my list, that list you saw earlier. Since this isn't a number, I'm gonna find the beginning of my numbers and then put it in here. Um, this is my big pack of diamond dots, leftovers. Um, I may start a new box for diamond dots if I start getting a lot of them, but I really don't have a lot of diamond dots colors at this point. So yeah, that was just a quick um, demo of those, and past me, we'll pick it up from here. Welcome back, guys. I'm sorry my camera cut off, and I am not rightly sure why, um, but... Uh, Basically, same thing with the 310. I boxed it up, put it in its spot. Um, I'm not going to do any more because 312, which is the next one, is a color I do not have. So I will finish these up downstairs. But uh, I'm trying to remember what I what I was saying. Um, if you have any comments on this storage, um, this storage solution that I use definitely feel free to leave them in the comment section. If you have any questions about my storage system, you can definitely do that. Um, I know one thing I was saying was that the advantage to this over the like binder with the baseball card sleeves is that the little baggies don't fall out. And I love that because that would drive me crazy. And also that the woman that I adapted this from did have a three ring binder for each round and square with a 447 set of all the, the gems that she bought that she had just put in there for like color matching. So if that's something you wanted to do that I definitely think is worth it but I wouldn't want to store all my extras in there because of the falling out factor. Um, if someone did, you know, de develops a binder that, um, you know, the binder that, a binder page that had like sealable tops so they didn't fall out, that'd be awesome. But, you know, that has not happened yet, so I don't know if it would happen or is possible, but it'd be interesting to see. So I will de-kit the rest of this off camera. Um, the only other thing I'll say is that it is June, as most of you will know. That is Pride Month. So happy Pride Month. Um, I am thinking about doing a raffle for Pride Month, a charity raffle, because I am involved with my local LGBTQ center. And um, they are always in need of funds. So I have a diamond painting coming that I think people would be interested in winning and I am considering uh, doing a thing where you know say for every five dollars you donate to my local place it'd be for my local place because that's what I'm attached to you would get an entry um, another main reason that I would want to do it for my local place is that we live in Montana of course big sky diamond painting that's big sky country and it's not you know necessarily the most gay friendly place I would say it's more gay friendly than most people think, but we still have a long way to go. So um, we at the at our LGBTQ center, we work really hard to um, promote acceptance in, in the city and also um, support especially LGBTQ youth. Um, you know, we have a big problem here with kids getting kicked out of their houses, that kind of thing. 
and it's just really sad. So we work really hard to try to help all those kinds of situations. And so um, if you guys think having a raffle for that charity would be a cool idea, definitely leave a comment below. I would be happy to hear your thoughts. And um, it's a real nice diamond painting. It is a diamond art club. I'll tell you that. And um, it might be the most expensive diamond art club on the site. So I feel like, you know, that might bring some people in. Um, you know, so anyway, uh, happy Pride Month. I will talk more about that later. And if you would like to see more videos from me, Bronwyn of Big Sky Diamond Painting, uh, definitely hit that subscribe button and bell if you'd like to be notified when I post a new video. And if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. And other than that, I will see you guys on the flip side.